Every once in a while I stumble upon a movie that I've never heard of, only to discover that there's a sequel or trilogy or whatever, and I'm completely shocked. And Porkchop is one of those movies, and if you're out there saying, what's Porkchop? Then for sure you're going to say, there was a Porkchop 2 and 3? And a spin-off movie of his female sidekick, Pig Girl? And I'm gonna tell you that it is a huge missed opportunity not to have his accomplice be named um, Applesauce. But yeah, you've maybe never heard of it, and neither have I. But really, um, how, how bad can it be? So let's go back to 2010 with Pork Chop from Amon Hardiman on a reported budget of 3000 bucks. It starts the old-fashioned way with a teen couple having sex in the woods and getting murdered by an unseen person. There's a newspaper in the credits from 1970 about a young boy winning a pig and a group of kids are going on a trip together including a punk and a guy who I think is supposed to be mentally handicapped and his um, wise-ass robot and this girl who for some reason is wearing her cheerleading costume um, camping. I think this is supposed to be set in the 80s because the characters make a bunch of pop cultural references talking like they're current, but a lot of the product in this convenience store, which is clearly a bar because I'm guessing they didn't have the location, are from modern times. We learn about a series of murders at a place called Camp Wood, and after shenanigans, they tell the campfire story of Pork Chop, a young man abused by his parents, so he eventually killed them and turned them into bacon. And holy crap, does anything take a long time to happen in this? At almost the one hour mark, the killer still hasn't appeared outside of the intro kill. It clearly doesn't take itself seriously. I mean, the robot has a sex scene, and Porkchop finally shows up for some croquet action and starts the violence, even killing the robot. And He's a large gentleman wearing a pig mask and overalls, and there's a few inspired moments of death like this lawn dart sequence. And then this guy is reading a Fangoria from 1985, so perhaps that's when it's supposed to be set. And Finally, Deb and Ian manage to set him on fire, and there's a final scene with Bert and Kevin, and I don't know what's going on because this is what the audio's like. It cuts to some time later, and it seems like it's quite a while since this reporter says that, the, that there's new killings reminiscent of the pork chop killings from the 80s, so the prologue is probably post 90s then, but he looks the same age as the earlier newscast, so maybe the main movie is late 80s, like 88 or something, and this end bit is early 90s or like 91 or something. One year later, Hardiman followed that up with Zombie Babies in 2011. It's part of his overall universe since it features the characters of Bert and Kevin again, and also has Sean C. Phillips prior to his weight loss. And I'm mentioning this, but not going to go full recap because we're focusing on the pork chop entries. And in 2011, there was a second part called Pork Chop 2: Rise of the Rind, but it was also just called Pork Chops. This one starts with old Porky back at it, which reminds me that I should do a timeline of Porky's. I mean, the, the second one is called The Next Day. How easy would that be? And Hardiman again ran the show, and there's this family moving out to the country, and people have modern cars, so we're seemingly out of the 80s, although the first film had anachronisms, so who, who knows? Young Simon meets Meg, who tells him about Pork Chop, and I don't know what's going on, but they start singing to each other? I think it's over here. Should be a clearing. Is your family rich or something? Not exactly. That's why I'm here. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be them just joking with each other or if the movie is sort of trying to be a musical, but whichever it is, it's terrible. Bert's here again and he has a new sidekick and since this film was filmed in 
rural West Virginia, this character is absolutely portrayed as what someone from rural West Virginia thinks that a gay man might act like. Bert tells the story of Porkchop and says he thought he killed him a few years back, so we're just a couple of years past the last movie, I guess, so maybe we're supposed to be in the 90s? At the high school, Simon tries to fit in with the other high school kids in their mid-20s, uh, and at least Choppy is more active in this one, showing up every 10 minutes or so to murder, and then just randomly kills off Simon, which, yeah, that's a bit of a surprise move, movie. You just killing off your main character, okay. Uh, this guy talks about The Hills, that MTV show, which ran from 2006 to 2010, and says it's a marathon, so it's not like the show just started. So this is late 2000s, if not actually real-time 2011, which is a bit of a confusion with the timeline, since the first movie would then be about 25 years earlier. It's weird because there's no cell phones being used, and no one's really on computers, so it feels like it's supposed to be an earlier age, but I guess... Uh, newsman Rick Richards is back, but a new actor who's much older, so I guess a bunch of time did pass? Uh, Sean C. Phillips is in this one too, and there's a new gross wrinkle as they're now insinuating that Porkchop doesn't just kill, and some of the female victims he kidnaps and holds hostage for, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, we also find out that Meg is Porkchop's daughter, which I guess justifies that 25 year time gap, but it, it's also maybe possible that he just kidnapped her and brainwashed her and she's the missing girl that they were talking about er earlier. The trilogy actually rounded out with 2012 with Porkchop 3D, which begins with Phillips again serving as a sort of a host and a bunch of kids in the woods and Porkchop attacks along with a female version, presumably Meg, I guess. And Heather is here from the last one, as we never saw her killed in that, just kidnapped, and she has flashbacks, but then, like, everyone is back from the past, like Simon's parents, and then the robot is back, and so is Richie, I guess, surviving the first movie, and still the same age, even though 25 years have passed, and Bert's back, too, with a new sidekick named Teddy, but it's a different guy. But oddly, it's the guy who played Simon in the last movie. What is even going on here? Bert says his book about killing Porkchop has been out of print for four or five years, so it's clear that that time gap did happen. The family's plan is to kill Porky for revenge, but seemingly just bought a taser, so I'm not sure that they thought this thing through. And in flashbacks, it's revealed that Meg was killed, so the new pig girl is someone else. There's then just a string of random interludes of people trying to be funny, I guess, and an escaped prisoner that's played by the guy who played Teddy in the last one, but he's a new stereotype, or, I mean, character now. There's a calendar up on the wall of Bert's cabin saying that it's May of 2011, so I guess that that's when this one is set, and since the last one was a short while ago, it was probably in 2010 then, and yeah, at an hour and 10 minutes in, this movie just decides to introduce a new set of characters and then spend like 10 minutes with them just hanging out and making bad jokes before getting attacked, and I think, uh, I think this axe was supposed to have been thrown? The random assortment of characters pretty much all get dead, leaving only Heather and new Teddy, and Bert just randomly shows up to shoot Pig Girl, who is some sort of mutant, I guess. There's then a bunch of pig kids, I guess Porky's other offspring, and Heather shoots and decapitates the chop, I guess ending his reign of terror. But the saga wasn't complete because two years later, in 2014, there was a spin-off called Pig Girl. And we get the standard retelling of the story and say that Porkchop is dead, but his daughter, the Pig Girl, is still on the loose. We then meet this guy who lives with his parents and they call him a child and stuff, but I mean, look at this guy, he's no younger than 30. He goes camping with his stepfather in an attempt for them to bond and they say that he's 24 and yeah, I'm not buying that. 
He sneaks away during the night to meet up with his friends that are partying nearby and she eventually attacks and give chase, making sure to, I guess, flail her arms in front of her. And this, this is dumb, but I know just what this is. They took a GoPro and the chest mount and put it on her and she's popping her arms in front like this to be like, see, no one is holding the camera. Somehow Pig Girl, who appears to be about 98 pounds, gets to drop on like everyone. And then in a really weird ending, the stepdad just gets Casey and they just drive off and that's, that's it. But during the credits, I guess the pig girl follows them home and kills everyone, which like she didn't even encounter them in the woods. Their characters never met. Why on earth would she feel the need to leave the woods and go after them? And how did she even know who they were or where they lived? This makes no sense at all. But then since the, I guess the film wasn't long enough, there's like a solid 10 to 15 minutes of a news guy interviewing people about the pig girl and of course she randomly shows up and now has a partner, I guess, whatever. So there you have it, it's four movies that have probably one of the wackiest timelines I can think of, um, considering that the first movie was supposed to be a throwback to like the 80s slashers. I think having it set in the 80s made sense, but then they didn't carry through with it, which I guess in a way, you know, maybe this is giving the filmmakers more credit and is due, but maybe they were kind of paying homage to the fact that the Friday the 13th movies have their own weird timeline. Um, I don't know if that was in your intention, uh, Mr. Hardman, but uh, if not, you, you can have that. Uh, I'm gifting that to you. Um, yeah, but these were uh, entertaining, I guess. Uh, I, I enjoyed the first one for a while. It did tend to get a little bit uh, uh, wearing out its welcome after a little while, but it, it sort of had a, a fun sense of humor to it. It was silly. Um, but yeah, after that, it kind of just got to be a little bit of the same old, same old. I would have liked to see them do something a little bit different with the plot line besides just repeating the same thing over and over. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, if you've seen these, let me know. I don't think many people have, but if you have, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought of pork chop movies or if you've even heard of them. Uh, I'd like to know that. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you like what you're seeing on the channel, of course, subscribe to it and share it out to your friends. And uh, also, please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movietimelines. I certainly would appreciate that. These guys go there and they help support the channel. You can too. You also support the channel just by watching these videos. Just, I don't know, just put them on repeat. Just let them play in the background in your house. Whatever. It's fine by me. I'm not going to be mad about that. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.